<laughs> My name is Will Wheaton. I have come from the future to save you from boring. <laughs> I didn't write that line. I stole it from my friend Matt Fraction. He uses it in one of the greatest comic books you will ever read in your life, Casanova. Uh, uh, I, uh, I want to tell you a couple of things about me before I get to uh, answering questions about me, which I know seems weird, but trust me, we're all going to get through this together. And it's going to be okay. Um, my wife and I were just at Walt Disney World uh, down in America's Wang. <laughs> it was great. We went down there for, uh, for a week before I spoke at the uh, comic convention in Orlando. It was really a lot of fun. Um, we went to uh, Epcot Center, which I absolutely love. It's probably my, my favorite of like any amusement park I've ever been to. Um, I love that idea of, like at Disney World, uh, Disneyland in, in California, we have this great vision of like what the world of the future is going to look like according to 1955. <laughs> it's very white. And <laughs> then there is this vision of what the future is going to look like from about 1980. And it, the entire world is run on a PowerBook 170 <laughs> because it has a megabyte of RAM. <laughs> and, that's, and that's all you need. When I was in, uh, then the other half of Epcot Center is just this, you know, it's like the, the World Showcase, right? So they have these pavilions from all over the world. It's sort of like the World's Fair um, uh, in, in one place. And you can do this thing called drinking around the world. <laughs> Not officially sanctioned by Disney, of course. <laughs> but they look the other way, which is always nice. Um, they, uh, you go to these different pavilions and you grab a beer. And if you start in Canada, by the time you get around to Mexico, you might be willing to drink the Corona that they have. <laughs> <laughs> but not this guy. I went straight to Germany. <laughs> and uh, the next thing I knew, I was back in America, and I was being asked to sit down. <laughs> I have this vague recollection of being in France and uh, talking to a fellow who was actually from uh, the south of France. He was from Nice, which was, gave us something to talk about because I lived there when I was younger and I really enjoyed it. And he was working there uh, at, at the, the France Pavilion in Epcot Center. And he was telling me that he had just come here on sort of a work visa because he wanted to see the United States and, and, uh, and, and be part of the Disney experience. But in France, this guy is a painter, and a sculptor, and, uh, a, and a woodworker. He was just a jock of all trades. <laughs> and that was a joke. <laughs> okay, now it's too hot. Sorry, Hillary, this is beautiful and I love it. Um, that's the mark of a good scarf, everybody, when it's too hot, and if you go outside, it's the only thing you have to wrap around yourself. <laughs> One day at the, end of, uh, at the end of the day, when we were in Walt Disney World, we went to this uh, ice cream place they have. It's like called the Ghirardelli Square Ice Cream Place. And um, I generally don't like sweets, uh, but I do enjoy um, a, a giant sundae on top of a waffle cone that has more calories in it than the average uh, family in the third world will have in their entire lives. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to go and have one of those. So we waited in line, and what happens is you go through these two very well organized lines, you place your order, and then you're thrown, and they give you a number. And then there are so many people there who want ice cream that you are thrown into, like, Thunderdome? <laughs> where they just scream out numbers from behind a thing and they throw ice cream and, like, and there's fights and, and it's, it's great. You know, there's, like, Master Blaster is in the back, like, just making, like, who make your Sunday? Oh, you do Master Blaster? Come on, bring it on. So, while we were there, there was also this big, like, cheerleading competition, okay? And uh, there were like, I mean, there must have been 50,000 cheerleaders of all ages with their cheer parents. Wow, cheer parents, thanks for making sports parents seem normal. <laughs> <laughs> like somewhere there's like a pageant mom who's like, I am glad there are cheerleader moms. <laughs> I saw this firsthand, this little girl, this little eight year old girl, end of the day tired, really just wants her ice cream. Like, I identified with this girl, okay? <laughs> and her mom 
you stand next to her mom, you can tell it was like had been a cheerleader and now just like wasn't anymore. I was sort of like trying to live that through the kid. And she was so passive aggressive to this little girl that she would say, this is this is what I remember. Um, now look, I have to tell that I have to tell you, y'all were great on Friday when no one was there. But yesterday in front of all of the Walt Disney, you stank. For real, I am not making this up. She really said that. And then she says, but you're good on Friday, when no one was there. <laughs> and she keeps doing this, right? And I'm watching this little girl just like trying really hard to like placate mom just so she can get to the ice cream. Like it's a complicated puzzle that she has to figure out. And if she, if she steps wrong, like this is a one hit point kind of situation. She's, like, oh, she's a first edition wizard and she's just dead if she has to go. <laughs> and, 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 and the mom is just so obnoxious. She's like, she's so obsessed with sort of like still being a cheerleader that she like keeps saying to the little girl, it's like 11 o'clock at night and you're waiting for ice cream, come on let's do it, rock and roll, high school, and she keeps doing this thing, right, and the girl's like, and I realized that I'm standing there and I am watching a mean girl's origin story <laughs> happen in front of me. And then, I got, and then I thought, you know what, this is sad. It's the only way the mom can relate to the daughter. And then I realized, oh, you know what? They're going to go have this incredibly wonderful, like, bonding moment when her mom teaches her how to throw up all that ice cream she gets. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. I thought that would be a really wonderful moment for them to share together. And I didn't feel so bad. My ice cream was delicious. <laughs> I ate it on the monorail. It's impossible to ride that monorail without singing the song. Monorail people do not like that. I guess it's like coming up to me and like singing the Star Trek song. Like, yep, that's how the song goes. I have heard it 18 times a day, 25 years. It turns out that I have a secret admirer. Um, I know, see, like, so I, so I was telling this story before, and someone goes, what do you mean, you only have one? No, secret admirer. <laughs> because prisons started showing up at my house, which was weird. <laughs> these were these things that I would love to have for myself, but, like, wouldn't buy for myself. Like, and he, like the entire Nirvana catalog would show up, right, like the box set. And the, the super incredible deluxe edition of Borderlands 2 would, uh, would show up with like everything. Like, I, I, you know, it's like a full size claptrap that just sits in the house and says, Minion! when you push a button on it. Like, <laughs> and these gifts are amazing. Like, they are coming from a, like, a generous sort of like person, but weird because they're coming to my house, which is not okay. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, should I return them? Probably not. <laughs> so one day, a little box shows up, I open it up, and it's got one of those horse head masks. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the best thing ever. And my wife goes, I know who your secret admirer is. My secret admirer is drunk me. <laughs> I understand. Because there were these notes that would show up around the house. And they would say things like, Bert and Ernie, behind elbow controversy? I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. And then these things that just kind of looked like they were written, like, sort of in uh, Arabic? That didn't make sense? I wrote down, but to share with you some of the things that some of the notes that I got for myself. Um, why not Buzz Lightyear shoes for adults? <laughs> Monkey on a palm tree or a pog humping a thing? It could go either way. <laughs> These are things Drunk Me wants me to, to talk to you about. And then just like in huge letters with a bunch of exclamation points, Billy Ocean. <laughs> So my wife says that I have to end it. <laughs> that this relationship with drunk me can't go on anymore. 
And I was like, how about a three-way with drunk me? <laughs> that did not go over <laughs> So I, I had to tell drunk me that it was over. He did not take it well. <laughs> Sent me a Taylor Swift mixtape from iTunes. <laughs> At least until the PS4 comes out. <laughs> I uh, recently became a godfather. My little sister, who's not little, she's 34, but you know, the way it works. Am I right, older brothers and sisters? Like they're college, right? So she, uh, she uh, gave birth to my nephew. And uh, it was a long thing. She was in labor for like, I don't know, 127 hours, they made a movie about it. <laughs> Finally, she was like, you can cut off my hand or get the baby out of me, just do one of the other two things. I, this is the thing, so my wife has had two kids. I don't understand this. Moms, you were like a t-shirt cannon for a human being. <laughs> Why does a bug bother you? <laughs> I don't understand. My wife made me clean out the entire pantry because there was one little bug in it, and it was like a lot of, ah, ah, really? That's, okay, I'll get rid of everything. So I'm going through the pantry and I'm cleaning things out. Apparently there was a time in our life where we were very concerned about there being a worldwide canned pumpkin shortage. <laughs> so my sister has my nephew, and she and her husband asked me if, if, if I would be his godfather. And I said, I, I, I'm honored. I would absolutely love to be his godfather, um, but I really want to be part of his life. You know, I don't want—I don't want this to be like a ceremonial thing. Um, I want to actually be. You know, I want to come up. They live in Portland. I want to come up and visit. I want to uh, share with him some of the things that are important to me. I want to give him some of my values, and I kind of want to help him be a nerd. <laughs> Because my brother-in-law, who I adore, he's wonderful, he's amazing, he is a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> okay? So, it's sort of like my nephew, who I call Batman. <laughs> it's like, so, it's like Batman, and my sister is like, we can't name him Batman. If we name him Batman, we'll die. And I'm like, no, Amy, if you name him Bruce, you'll die. <laughs> I want, it's the godson I deserve. <laughs> so, my godson is like Anakin Skywalker, and like I'm Obi Wan Kenobi, and my brother in law is a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> so, in order to exert a little nerd influence on him, when he was right when he was born, I went to Think Geek. <laughs> and I bought him. Everything. Because <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be a brown coat or if he's going to be a Trekkie or, or you know, if he's going to be all of the above, which would be great with me. I'd be fine with that. But I sent, you know, all of this stuff. I probably didn't need to send it next day, but I was excited. <laughs> that was expensive. And my sister says, my sister calls me up and she says, so we just got a pallet from Think <laughs> What am I supposed to do with a solar radiometer? I don't know, Amy, put it in the sun? Why did you get me all of these replica Game of Thrones swords? He's a baby. Where am I supposed to put these? I don't know, put them over the crib like a mobile. Every day he'll be like, someday I'm gonna be honorable enough to hold Long Claw. It's gonna be great. They didn't get the cool gene, my, uh, the nerd gene. My, my, my sister didn't get the nerd gene. My brother got it a little bit, my sister didn't. My parents don't have it, I have it. So science doesn't understand the nerd gene at all, which is very ironic if you stop to think about it. <laughs> my mom is really obsessed with being cool. She wants everybody to think that she's really, really cool. My dad, is super, super laid back. He does not have a crap to give about anything. My mom, 
very concerned about being cool. And every now and then I write a story on my blog about my mom, and she uh, calls me because she, uh, she says I have misrepresented her. <laughs> so I wrote this story about how when I was a kid, and we would go on auditions together, and my mom would uh, make me listen to Barbara Streisand in the car. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The only thing worse than Barbara Streisand is Barbara Streisand when you're a kid in the car and you are for forbidden from touching the radio. <laughs> so I wrote about this and about how awful it was and how much I hated it. Because I spent, like, I lived in the car in the afternoons when I was a kid because of auditions and stuff. And uh, so I wrote this story. It was mostly just about, like, music and why I love it when music is important to me. My mom calls me up. You know, you really misrepresented me. Really, mom? Yes, you really misrepresented me. Um, we didn't listen to Barbara Streisand in the car. We listened to Boston and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and the Doobie Brothers. You know what, Mom? You're right. We did. When Dad was driving. <laughs> no, Will. That's not fair. That's not right. Really, Mom? Really? You didn't make me listen to Barbara Streisand in the car? Mom? I am a woman in love and I'll do anything to get you into my world. <laughs> Put a 
lot of your sense of self-worth and identity into something like a t-shirt. Like it just it just doesn't matter, man. Like you're gonna buy this, and you're gonna like this t-shirt is a fifth of a really great Xbox game. And you're gonna buy this, and you're gonna think it's great, and you're gonna wear it to school, and some cool kid's gonna make fun of you, and then you're gonna feel like why did I do this? This was a huge mistake. And as I'm telling him this, I see that the Iron Man t-shirt I've come to get. <laughs> it's the last one on the rack. And someone's going to take it. <laughs> so I just knocked the kid down and ran back to the it Because YOLO, guys! Took that t-shirt home, <laughs> hung it up in the closet, have not worn it once. <laughs> I want a t-shirt that says, I am the exact right amount of sexy for this shirt. Because <laughs> it will confuse people. <laughs> so, uh, if anyone has questions that they would like to ask me, um, oh, sweetheart, you're adorable. You put your hand up just like in school. That's great. Come on. Come on. <laughs> We'll line up at the microphone kind of thing and then uh, do that for a while. Keep climbing it, baby. You're going to get there. <laughs>